friends. I hope you're having a good day. Today I'm going to do a get ready with me. I'm just going to talk. I'm not going to spend too long going through each product. So kind of more relaxed video today. I'm going to put some makeup on, just some real simple makeup, and then do something with my hair. I washed my hair yesterday, so I think I'm going to put a few little curls in it and try to make something more of this. This is how my hair looks after I wash it and don't do a blow dry on it. It's just like mm, flat. Okay, so I'm gonna start with my makeup and I will start by putting a little face cream on from Mix Easy. This is still one of my favorites for face cream after I got it earlier this year. Just love it under makeup. So I don't know if you can see out my window here, but it is snowing for the first time this year and I'm so excited. We're supposed to get four inches today. And I just, I woke up and I was so surprised. We have a lot of windows in my living room, a lot of windows. And it was just absolutely gorgeous this morning. So I woke up, I got an incredible amount of sleep last night. I almost got 12 hours, which is very unusual for me. But sometimes I do that on the weekend where I try to get super caught up on my sleep. So I woke up and the snowflakes were literally this big. They've really decreased in size, but I'm not sure if you can see. Hopefully you can see a little bit of snowflake back there. All right, I'm going to start by putting a little bit of foundation. And of course I use the IT CC Cream, my absolute favorite, and you can tell I'm getting very low and I need to make another order because I have like maybe two or three times left. I have some other colors or other shades as well that I could use if I don't get it in time. So I don't know how the weather is in your part of the world, but in Arkansas, I live in Arkansas in the United States. I am actually almost out of this. It is not coming out. Oh, there's some. I think last year we got about maybe two times it snowed and it didn't even stick on the ground. So it seems like I moved to Arkansas probably, it's been almost 15 years. I can't believe I'm saying that. I've been in Arkansas that long. I used to live in Florida and before that, Texas. When I first moved to Arkansas, I think it probably snowed several times a year. It was cold, we got ice storms. And over the last 10 years, like the weather has just gotten a lot more mild up here in Northwest Arkansas. So I kind of miss that. And so every time it does snow or we have winter weather in the winter time, I'm always just so happy. <laughs> you gotta enjoy when the, the surprises come, right? I'm gonna put a little bit of concealer on my eyes. So I've got some upcoming time off for my work. I think I've told you this several times before, but I work for an ed tech company. We make digital curriculum for students to learn. And as you can imagine, this year has been a monumental year for digital curriculum because of all the students learning from home. Anyways, I am ready for some more time off. Let me put it that way. It's been a very hard year for me, but I've had a lot of like professional growth. I've learned a lot of things and I've been able to work better with teams and became a better manager this year. Let me put it that way. So anyways, I am going to be taking two weeks off here. I have one more week of work and then I'll have two weeks off and I'm super excited about it. Not only am I going to get to see my kids the second week, but it'll just be a nice break and just kind of to recharge for the next year. I know next year is probably not going to be easy as well, but I am looking forward to the time of recharging. What am I going to do during that time? I have so many things I want to do. Over Thanksgiving holiday, I actually did a ton of cleaning and reorganizing. Went through my house, cleaned it, like refolded the linen closet, and I rearranged my office and completely cleaned it out. It's so much nicer in there to work now. So it's clean and it's organized. So. I've gotten a lot of those big tasks out of the way, so I want to do some things that are more fun this PTO. Obviously, there's going to be cleaning involved because I'm going to be getting my house ready for my kids to arrive. And if you didn't catch that in the last video, my brother and his family usually come down every Christmas 
from Atlanta and they spend a week here. We canceled our plans this year. It just didn't feel safe enough and there's just too many variables. So we decided to cancel that. But my kids are right now in a two week hard quarantine together. So my son lives at college here in Arkansas and he drove to my daughter's house and all of them are just quarantined together. They got stocked up on a bunch of food and I think they're having fun right now. So I'm really thankful to them for making the effort to do this. I really appreciate them making this effort so that we can keep, you know, everyone safe, including my parents who live right next door. All right, I haven't had my eyebrows done since last February. <laughs> I've just been plucking them on my own. You know, I think they've grown out a little bit over this year, kind of filled in some of the gaps, but I wish I could get my eyebrows done. Let me put it that way. So I've been getting my mom to cut my hair and I've been doing my own hair cutting at least this last time. And I do miss like being in a salon and getting pampered. I miss that. I have been able to save some money not going to the salon this year. So that has been really nice. I'm gonna just do my eyebrows real quick with this Billion Dollar Brows Pencil, which is what I've been using lately. I still like the other thing I used. I used to use the Anastasia Dip Brow, but I have just, I don't know, gotten used to using this pencil lately, and I just barely fill my eyebrows in. I actually looked, there's only one shade for this brow pencil. I was hoping that they had a lighter shade, but I actually think it matches pretty well. It's like not super precise brows, but you're just kind of filling in the gaps. I'm really not a fan of the overly made up brows. They call them on fleek. <laughs> if you're talking about how millennials refer to super precise eyebrows, your eyebrows are on fleek. But I think the way these look right now are perfectly fine. I would have in the past maybe put some concealer underneath to further define them, but I'm not worried about them being super defined right now. I just wanted the gaps filled in. So this next thing I'm gonna do is a new technique I've been using for my eyeliner and it's called tight lining. I am not great at this and I don't have the right eyeliner for it, but I'm gonna still do it. <laughs> I seem to always make myself cry when I do this because you're getting right in the inner part of your eye, but it looks so good. Every time I do this, I always get compliments on my eyes. So I'm gonna show you what I do. I do not have the technique down just to let you know. And I also don't have the right pencil. What I was hoping to get was a retractable, not, not like this. This is a coal eyeliner pencil, but the most appropriate thing to get, I think, so that your eyes don't get poked from this is like a gel eyeliner, like a retractable gel eyeliner. So I'll just zoom in here so you can see what I'm doing. But the idea is that you wouldn't be putting eyeliner on top of your lid, but you do it, it's called tight lining, and you do it up underneath your eyelash. And you gotta be careful not to get a pencil that will leave little junk in your eye because then it'll feel like you've got stuff in your eye, but can you tell? I'll do it one more time. I don't know if you can tell the difference. It's really noticeable when you do the top lid and the bottom lid on both sides. So I'll do the top lid over here. Okay, and I'll do the bottom lid here. Obviously your hands need to be clean before you do this, so always wash your hands. Okay, that's it. So you can tell that my eyeliner is tight lined under my lid just by lifting my eyelid a little bit up and just going right under the lashes as well as on the bottom line too. And I don't know, I think it makes the eyes pop in my opinion. All right, I'm gonna put a little eyeshadow on. This is Kylie Jenner Pressed Powder Palette and I'm a big fan. You can tell what I'm a big fan of. I'm a big fan of this one, which is I Love Myself, which is kind of like a base. And I'm a fan of It's an Emergency. I like that little neutral color. So I always start with that kind of light colored, this one. I love myself all over my lid. I would be so happy if I just had those two colors. I might try to see if I could find those shades separate, like in their own little package. I just don't even use the other ones. All right, now I'm gonna put It's an Emergency, the very neutral kind of taupey color. And on this side as well. If you're like me and have like looked up makeup videos, first of all, <laughs> most of the people doing makeup videos are like in their early 20s, I would say that. I mean, there are definitely exceptions. And so mature women 
don't feel like they can connect. I'm probably right in the middle age group. I'm, I'm in my upper 40s. I turned 47 this year. And it's actually interesting when you look at my channel, I can look at the demographics of who watches my channel. And I can kind of go back to when I first started my YouTube channel, which was, it's been about a year and a half ago. My mom just suggested, hey, you should try to do a YouTube video. You, sh you should, you should try. So I did a few different ones and I ended up doing like, oh, I think it'd be fun to show what I do with my pixie cut. By the way, I'm using Maybelline The Falsies Lash Lift Mascara. So I put a couple different videos out. I did one video, how to style a pixie cut. By the way, I really like this mascara. This mascara is awesome. I just ordered it from Amazon. Anyway, I did a how to style your pixie cut video and it did actually pretty well. And I did a couple other videos and they didn't do well. And I just kept noticing like people are watching pixie cut videos. People are watching 10 minute makeup videos. And the age demographics of who watches my channel as a whole, I have about almost 100 videos on my channel. It's extremely skewed towards women Women that are 65 and older. Actually, I'll just tell you because I've got it right here on my phone. So here, here are the demographics of my channel. If you're curious, women make up 90% of my viewers. It looks about 12% male, but I think that's maybe misleading because I think a lot of women may use their husband's account. And their age ranges are 65 and older is at 34%. 55 to 64 is 25%. 45 to 54 is 16 or 17%. 30 35 to 44 is 11 percent, 25 to 34 is 9 percent, and 18 to 24 is 4 percent. Not that you really wanted to know those metrics, but I think it's super interesting. Going back to my comment about watching makeup videos, you can't really find a lot out there that's geared toward women in their middle and upper age ranges. And they also do things like that just doesn't seem most people would do. Like I would never just put falsies on and go to the store. I don't even like false eyelashes. Not that that's a bad thing and I think they're beautiful, but most women don't use false eyelashes or heavily make themselves up too much. I think most people just do fairly simple makeup, the regular person. All right, I think all I need to do now is put some lipstick on and then we'll do something with this hair. So I'm just gonna use this Anastasia Beverly Hills and this is called Dead Roses, my favorite color from them right now. It's like a muted red, but it's got like some browns in it too, so it's kind of dark. All right. One more step, I'm gonna spray with some makeup setting spray. This is Everyday Vacay. All right, now to my hair. If you watched last week's video and you saw a bunch more pink in my hair, it's just barely there. I think I'm gonna try again this week and put a little more pink in because I liked it so much. Every day that it was in there, I was like, oh, but every day I, it was in there, it washed out just a little bit more, even if I just put conditioner on. So I wish I could have some way of making colors like pink stay in my hair a little bit longer. So this is the Calista Perfector Pro. This is a hot brush, as you might call it. It. It's basically a round brush that has a barrel that is heated. So you have to have dry hair to use this. And my favorite tool of all time for pixie cuts, this is it right here. Someday I will look for some dupes for this because this is a little bit pricey. So I'd really like to find out from you guys because I'd like some feedback about what you think I should do with my hair. Should I re-dye all of it blonde or should I keep letting it grow out? That's the second thing. Should I just keep letting it grow out and let the brown come in? Or number three, should I highlight blonde so that it doesn't look like I have like an inch of growth and then keep the brown underneath? I'd like to crowdsource an opinion here. So if you have an opinion about what I should do with the color of my hair, comment down below and let me know. I actually do really like the dark underneath. I just think it looks cool. But also I know if I just keep dyeing the top blonde, to me it's too big of a difference because then the blonde is super blonde and then the bottom is super dark. I think that looks nice on some women. I just don't necessarily think it looks great on me. 
And the other thing I wanted to mention is I watched a really cool video of a woman giving herself a pixie cut with thinning shears and it actually turned out super cute. But I'm really liking this undercut pixie that I've got going on right now. So I don't think I'm gonna do an entire pixie cut with thinning shears, but I think I might try it in the future because you don't have to be super precise and it ended up being totally cute. All right, just a few more curls and I think we're ready to start playing with the style. Now I'm going to break out my new favorite product to put on my hair after I curl it or blow dry it. And this is the Bumble and Bumble Thickening Cream Contour. This is basically lotion for your hair. It's cream for your hair. And what's wonderful about it is it does not leave your hair sticky. So I'm just putting it all over my hands like I was putting lotion on and then gonna work on this style. Kind of like my part covered up there, like a deep side part. And the thing with an undercut pixie that I've been noticing is curls on the part that kind of falls over like this side. I like just kind of combing it down so that it lays okay on your head. All right, I'm liking it. I think this is too cute. I think we are just ready for a quick spray. This is Aquage. I still don't know how to pronounce this. Aquage or Aquage. This is a finishing spray I got from Ulta. Doesn't need a lot, just a little tiny spray because it'll get too crispy, unless you really want it crispy, but I'm super happy with how this turned out. I think the makeup looks good, and I also think the hair looks great. Let me show you all sides so that you can see this in its entirety. Here's my right side, my left side, and the back. Well, thank you so much for watching today. I really appreciate all of my viewers. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, I'd love to have you. Please stay well. I know a few of my viewers have messaged me that they were struggling with COVID and I just want to give another big collective hug to all my viewers out there. If you're well, stay well. If you are sick, all of us are rooting for you guys and just stay positive and we will get through this. I will talk to you all next time. Have a wonderful week. Bye.